Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this house. We worship and thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you turn to John chapter 21 in your Bibles, let me just say how great it is to have all of our guests with us today. I hope you came hungry. I'm all that stands between you and lunch at about 11.30, so I've, I'm mindful of that. But we have brought lots of food, and I hope you came to help us eat it. There is no charge for you, so uh, now we got lots of people want to stay. I thought we were doing a fundraiser. No, we just want a fellowship. Once a quarter, we get together and invite lots of friends and sit down and eat with them and have a, just a great time. John chapter 21. Nick, it's great to see you. John chapter 21, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. There's a Sea of Galilee. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus. <clears throat> Look that up. Thomas means the twin. Didymus, he was called Didymus, that means double. We know him as Doubting Thomas. The Bible says that he was a twin, and they called him double. I'm so glad because I know Thomas isn't the only one that doubted. I'm so glad there's another one. I want to believe God for greater things, don't you? <clears throat> I'm so glad that eventually Thomas came out of that and said, my Lord and my God. Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. <clears throat> they say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, <clears throat> have you any meat? They answered him, No. Verse 6. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he did cast himself into the sea. <clears throat> and the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty-three and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. <clears throat> Jesus simply said, cast the net on the right side of the ship. I want to preach this morning on the subject, you can get there from here. You can get there from here. Your need, your need is as close as the other side of the ship. You feel sometimes that it is such a great distance away. There are so many things that need to happen before I can receive what I need. And Jesus just said, just on the other side. Jesus, I ask you today for your touch, your anointing once again on the living word of God. Would you let it land in the hands of as loaves and fishes, God, a miracle. God, blessing, convincing. God, allowing people to receive exactly what they came needing today from you. I pray that you'd anoint it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before you're seated, look at your neighbor and say, you can get here, there from here. You can get there from here. <clears throat>
for political sake. Just let me turn your attention to verse 6 when he said, cast the net on the right side of the ship. Doesn't mean the left side. It means a, they were fishing on the left. Just take it for what it's worth. It just, just notice that. I also noticed in verse 7 that the disciples whom Jesus loved, of course that's John, when it happened the way that it happened, John simply looked and said, it's him. It's him. Something great happened with very little effort. Something miraculous just happened. It's him. I know it's him. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if when the Lord does something so simple, we would just give him the glory and say, it's him. I know it's him. Well, it was just human intelligence. It was just humanity's talents and abilities. It was just a, a, a talent that I possess. No, when something happens so simply and something great comes out of it, why don't we just say, it's him. I know it's him. It, that's, that's just the kind of thing he would do. It's got to be him. But we look. There's one thing that hell is very good at. And it was alluded to twice already this morning. It's creating an imaginary distance in our minds between where we are now and where we want to be. We create it in our mind thinking, this is what I need. And this is where I am. So there's a long distance between that. So maybe, maybe in 14 consecutive services, I'll be able to get what I need. I know I did when I first wanted the Holy Ghost. I tried so desperately and very sincerely to, to, to try to position myself to receive it. And then we had revival services coming up. And we were going to have service Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday twice on Sunday. And I thought maybe by Sunday night I'll be ready. <laughs> if we do it every, that was my thinking. Why? Because I put a distance in my brain saying, this is what I want and I know who I am. So it's going to take me that long to close that distance between what I am and what God wants me to be. There's such a dramatic distance and therefore I won't expect it on Monday night or Tuesday night or Wednesday. It'll take me at least until Sunday. That's the lie of the devil be trying to convince you to wait for what you need today. What is it that you need today? Do you need deliverance? Do you need your heart filled with the power of the Holy Ghost? Do you need a healing in your body? Do you need doubt to go away? Do you need fear to go away and faith to come in? Whatever it is you need, you don't have to wait one more minute. It took them all night to accomplish nothing. They worked all night long and had nothing. Have you ever felt that before? This just isn't working. It was a bad day. Well, how'd you do today? Nothing. Did you shoot anything today? Nope. Didn't see anything either. How'd you do yesterday? Nothing. There's times in our life when we feel like we've exerted all of our ability. And at the end of the day, this, they said they, they fished all night long. And it says by the next day they caught nothing. God wants to tell you this morning, you can fish all night long long and catch nothing and Jesus simply walks up and goes wait a minute it's got to be more complicated than that you mean you want me to take this net from you know they didn't have a huge ocean liner they fish with nets out of fishing boats that were six feet wide I mean 
as wide as I am tall. So to take that net and move it to the other side, are you kidding me? Like if there's not fish here, there'll be fish there. Well, that doesn't make any difference. You want me to... Now, how foolish is... That's how we think. So you simply want me to take the net from here and move it to... I can reach that far. A simple act of obedience to the word of God can bring it from nothing to more than you can lift in the boat. It doesn't make any sense. Just move the net. I've been fishing here all night and you just move the net. Jesus, I don't understand why you would. It doesn't make any sense. All you have to do is just move the net. I have a good question for all of us. How's it working so far? Nothing. So you have nothing to lose. If you've been fishing all night and you have nothing, then let's get rid of nothing and get something. Just move the net to the other side. Why don't you do something just a little bit different than you were doing all night long? I've been doing all of... Don't you realize that there's a story in the word of God that says they were seriously just rowing that boat and the storm hit and they were rowing against the waves and the wind and they were exhausted. And the Bible talks about them being about in the middle of the sea. And Jesus comes walking to them and he says, how things going, man, we're having a rough time. He stepped in their boat and the Bible says immediately they were at the shore. It's like Jesus lifted up the boat and he said, if you put me in your boat, you won't have to row all night. They rowed all night and they got nowhere. We can row all of our life and and fight against the storm of sin and be in the middle of the sea, worrying, fearful of our own lives. And all of a sudden Jesus steps in the boat. Wham, you're on the shoreline. It doesn't take all life long to get there. You think you're a long ways away from shore, but put Jesus in the boat. Mm. The only difference, just a little bit of obedience. The trick of Satan in this end time hour is for you and I to see or believe something that's really not there. We have this picture in our own mind. I'll never be able to live for God. I can't be like those people in the church. I could, I could never live like that. It's just so far away from where I am now. You know, why, you know why I knew to say that? Because that's what I thought when I walked into a church like this. I felt the power of God and then I looked around and looked at all those people and thought, I don't stand a chance. There's no way I could live like them. See, that's that lie. That's that lie that the devil gives you and says, see, you'll never be good enough to go to heaven. You'll never be able to serve. You'll never be able to follow this book. And it's a lie. God says, you don't understand. All you got to do is put the net on the other side and victory is yours. Success is yours by putting your net on the other side. I know that because Acts 17, 27 says that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be, though he be not far from every, not any, but every. There's a difference. He be not far from any one of us. Well, that could be at a different time. But he said every, he is near enough to everyone. Well, I know he's close to him and I know he's close to her. But man, he's a long ways away from me. No, he's not. He's as simply as close as putting the net from one side to the other. A little bit of obedience and a little bit of faith. Sometimes it doesn't even require faith. Peter, Lord, we have toiled all the night. That's not faith. That's complaining. That's saying I don't really believe that what's going to happen or what you say is going to happen is going to. And how do I know? Because another point, Peter said, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. When Jesus did something that he doubted, he said, oh, man, 
look at all those fish, but I'm just a sinner. Why? Because I didn't believe him for what he said. Because faith isn't always a necessity for a miracle. Although it does work. They just simply took the net, put it on the other side. Woohoo! Look at all these fish. It was obedience in that situation. God has never been a distant God. I know of two very dramatic instances where man tried to distance himself, and it was in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. When they ate of the tree, they tried to hide. They said, we did it, and now we're going to hide from him because he comes by every day. He comes by every day. And they ate, of, they sinned. And when God came by, they hid from him. But notice, he said, where is he? I'm going to come looking for him. The, the, the second time I remember is in the book of Revelation. So from Genesis to Revelation, we find that they failed God and they began to hide. They were trying to hide in dens and caves and say, please let this mountain shut off the opening of the cave so we can hide from him. But in every case, they can't hide from God, whether it's Genesis or Revelation, whether it's lying, whether it's fear, whether it's doubt, whether it's, whether it's adultery, it doesn't matter. You can't hide from him. He's going to come looking for you because if we feel after him, he is not far from every one of us. The lie says, I've gone too far. I've waited too long. I doubted God the last 42 and a half services. I think I've worn him out. But God says, I'm going to come looking for you. Genesis to Revelation, God still comes looking. Distance and division are what hell desires most. I want you to feel distant from God, and I want to bring division. You realize that division is one of the seven abominations unto God? God knows that if he can divide the people... If he can divide the people, he'll divide them from God. Somebody's going to be divided. And God says, I paid my own blood for those souls. They're more valuable to me than all the gold and silver and diamonds and rubies in this world. And in any other world, you're more important to me. Don't divide the church. Don't divide people from me. Don't separate people from me. It's an abomination. Division and distance. God hates it because distance always brings division. He wants us to be like the man sitting by the pool of Bethesda. That's what the devil wants. Hell wants us to be like that man 38 years at the pool of Bethesda waiting for a miracle. The Bible says that an angel would come and touch the water and cause it to ripple. And that's when God was going to give a miracle. And that's what the devil wants us to see God as. All that man could see was the distance from where he was to where he wanted to be. I want to be healed, but I've got to get over there. I've got to get from here to over there and I can't do it. Have you ever felt like God is just too far away? It's just a little bit out of reach. If I was just a little bit closer, if you could just help me get into the presence of God, I could finally get what I need. The devil wants us to believe that, but Jesus believes greater than that. <sighs> Jesus provided a solution that the man couldn't get to. Let's make the water ripple. And he said, well, that's great for all of you that can walk. Do you realize that there are some solutions in the word of God that we just have difficulty getting to? Because of doubt, because of distance, because of failure, because of a little voice in our ear that says, oh, why don't you just give up? You're not good enough for that. But there's a distance between what God has provided and what we can get to. But I've got a solution for you today. One thing you can count on. When you can't get to Jesus, Jesus will get to you. Oh. 
Oh, I think we ought to clap again. I feel something good happening right now. Something of faith is happening right now. Somebody's starting to believe I'm a little too far away. And Jesus says, how close do you want me to get? How close? If you can't get there, I'll come to you. You sense right now the rippling of the water and you think, I feel, I feel something. Man, the hair on my neck is standing up. I feel the power of the miraculous God in this place. And you're thinking, I don't know if I want to go up there. And Jesus says, hi. You can't get to me, I can get to you. Does anybody feel that today? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand on somebody's pew in a minute. Do you feel that? If you can, if you got a little doubt, if you've been prayed for before, if you've never seen it happen before, he's coming to you. He's coming to you. He wants someone to receive a revelation that there is no distance between you and God. You can get there from here. Let's close our eyes just for a moment, please. Jesus, we feel, oh, wow. God, something is being born in this place this morning. There is, there is faith being born in this place. God, I can feel it. I can feel it's like filling up a gas tank. You can, you can see the needle going up if you have the key on. You can see it just going. I can feel that faith rising in this place. Could we clap unto him again and say, Lord, I feel faith growing. I can get there from here. Hallelujah. Jesus told a parable of a prodigal son, because distance means nothing. He said, notice, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, different story. I'll go there first. He said, just say the word. Just say the word and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus say unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. A lot of us stop there. Not worthy for the miracle. Then why are you here? Why did he come? He said, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh. And to my servant, do this and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed. Verily I say unto you, I have not not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Faith of what? Faith in authority. He said, no, no, you you don't even need to come. I'm not worthy for you to come in my house, but I still need a miracle. So why don't you say it? You don't have to come because I believe that there is no distance between you and the need. See, I believe that you can speak. You can speak to the disease. You can speak to the sickness from where you are, and it will automatically happen. There is no, see, to understand that there is no distance between God and your need is an, is an association with the understanding of authority. I understand you control everything in this universe. Whatever you say, it will happen. You don't even have to be there. Why? Because you're already there. You're already there. I know who you are. You're the Messiah. You're God in flesh. You possess all of the power and knowledge and wisdom of this, of this world and universe. That's who you are. He said, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer, outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way, And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the selfsame hour. He didn't give him something to carry home. All right, you take this, you take this handkerchief. We'll anoint it with oil and you take it home. He just said, just speak the word. 
you don't need to take anything home. I'm already there. The handkerchief is for people who don't believe he's already there. Do we believe that Jesus is already in the room with that loved one, that unsaved spouse, our children who are on drugs, our neighbor, our parents? Is he already there or not? If we will believe it and say, Lord, just say the word. There is no distance. Now the prodigal in Luke 15. You know, if you print these things out, the... the, the electronic stuff doesn't get all messed up. The prodigal walked away in Luke chapter 15, walked away from his father and his family. I noticed in that story, two boys, the younger leaves, takes what he felt was his inheritance and spent it on riotous living. Not once do you find his father turning his back Not once do you find him calling him a servant, but the father calls him a son. See, the distance for that boy was in the mind of, it was in his mind. It wasn't in his father. His father never said servant. His father said son, but the son said, here's my position. Here's what I see. I see distance between my father and me. The distance was in the mind of the prodigal, not his father. He said, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. Notice that. He didn't say, I heard you call me servant. He said, I sinned and therefore this is what I think you're thinking about me. I'm a long way from being your son, so I'll just call myself your servant. God didn't say that. The prodigal said that. See, it's a lie from from hell. It's a lie. The distance between you and God is a lie. The devil wants you to believe you are so far away. Don't even don't even start to come back. And if you do, you'll never amount to anything because just go to God and say, "I'm just a servant. I'm not even worthy." Hogwash. God wants to call you his son. He wants to call you his child. That's why he went to the cross. We are sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, whereby you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby he calls you. We call him Abba, Father. When you are renewed and restored to him, you can open up your mouth and say, Father. It's that simple. The father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Many times the distance is perceived and isn't even from the father. We perceive such a distance. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can make it. It doesn't come from God. Why would God hinder your ability to get back to him when that's what he went to the cross for in the first place? I'm going to go do this and then make it difficult. Notice the pool of Bethesda. He provided a miracle. A guy couldn't get there. So he said, all right, I'll take care of this one myself. He wraps himself in flesh, walks amongst them and shows up. And he says, hey, you want to be healed? Could I... Rephrase his response. Duh. He shows up because he removed the distance between the man and his need. He wants some of you to see, or hell wants some of us to see a distance. While God is simply saying, cast your net on the other side. Some of us are so close to our miracle. If you touched where you are now and just stretched your hand, you'd touch the other side of the boat. Are you serious? It's as close as a touch. It's simply to make a small adjustment. That's how quick. But I've sinned for 41 years and now 
you say that can all be done today? That's how close he is. You feeling that? That's how close he is. But I've gotten myself in some really bad situations. Just move the net. But I, I've believed this for 20 years and I'm still messed up. That's because you won't move your net. Small amount of obedience. A small. Just pull it up and put it on the other side. It's amazing. We'll be fishing for salmon, and it's just amazing how you have two nets. Pastor Goff saw it. You have one on this side. They're, they're dipping. They're putting a net on that side, a net on that side. It's amazing how just like one side gets hit all the time. It's like, if why don't we just put two on this side? Well, the problem is, is that if you put two on the same side, you're going in circles because of all that drag, so you got to kind of even it out. But it's amazing how a lot of times it just keeps coming from one side. Sometimes we just need to move the net. Simple. Just move it or even move out just a little bit to capture them. But the fish are not a long ways away. They're right underneath your boat. Your miracle is not a long ways away. It's right there. Just need to move the net. Hell doesn't want you to see how close you really are to your victory. It doesn't want you to see how close your family is to getting back in church. All hell wants you to see is the distance between where you want it to be and where it really is. Hell is saying, you fished all night. Why don't you just give up? Heaven is saying, you've just been fishing on the wrong side. Can it really be that easy? I have a better question. Why would God make it that hard? Why would he do that? I don't find anything in the Bible that says, well, since you gave $10,000 in the offering, you may have a miracle. I don't see any of that. I see him saying, thy faith hath made thee whole. I see a little obedience going a long way. Just cast out your net on the other side. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will. A little bit of obedience goes a long way. It had nothing to do with qualification. It had nothing to do with talent. It had nothing to do with how bad of a sin. It simply had to do with, what do you want me to do? Put the net on the other side. Okay. I didn't have to jump up and down. I didn't have to clap my hands. I didn't have, all I had to do was say, if that's what you want, then that's what I'll do. But do you realize I've sinned for 57 years? And you're saying all of that can be gone? Yep. What do I have to do? Put your net on the other side. What do you mean? The Bible says, repent. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, the blotting out of your sins. Well, you mean the ones that just last week? Yes. What about the ones the week before? Yes. What about the ones when I was four? Yes. What about when I was born? The Bible says, that a woman did not deliver the child that says that the woman was delivered of the child. <laughs> she was delivered. It was a lot of struggle and pain. She, I'm delivered from that child. Whew. Is it really that easy? Yes. A little bit of obedience can literally wipe away a lifetime of sin. Well, I believe what you said before, but I'm not sure about that one. Acts chapter 2, 38. Acts chapter 8, 16. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Acts chapter 19, 1 through 6. It's recorded. You can look it up on Monday 
and get all those scriptures. If you look that up, they baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he has been given a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what it says. Wow. Hell is saying you're never going to see what you've been praying for. Heaven is saying you're closer than you've ever been. For those of you on the back pews, the man couldn't get to the pool, so Jesus brought the power of the pool to him right next to him. He removed the distance. Guess where I was sitting first time I came in the church? Why? Why was I sitting way back there? Because I surely, it was way too hot up here. It was, people were, people were whacked out up here. They needed, they needed, yeah, Nick remembers, they, they needed people in the white coach to come and put them all wrapped up. But see, Jesus knew that. And he said, here's what I'm going to do. Hey, Betcher, yes, sir. He said, I know you sat on the back pew. Yes. He said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring my pool to you. I didn't come up to the altar. Are you kidding me? I couldn't wait for my brother to stop praying so I could get out of there. But God brought that pool way back here. And I'm sitting there, and I look over at Jimmy, and I, and I said, well, you want to go up there? No. He had a broken arm. He said, I'm not going. To hell. I'd rather go home with a broken arm than go up there. But as I was back there, all of a sudden tears began to come down my face. What was going on? Jesus brought the pool to me. He said, I know you're having trouble getting from back there to up here. You're too embarrassed, pride, whatever. You're, you're afraid. You're fearful of what could possibly happen up there. So here's what I'm going to do. He walked into the back row and he said, hi. And I'm like, huh. This isn't fair. I'm on the back row. And he said, yeah, so was the man by the pool of Bethesda. But he couldn't get to the front pool. So I brought the pool to him. God is going to bring the pool to you. If you're afraid of him today, he's already in your pew. And he's like, hi, I'm here. What would you like me to do? Will thou be made whole? Yes, I will. Would you please stand with me? You thought you were safe back there. The church is closer to revival than we've ever been. It's just on the other side of a prayer meeting. Pentecost began right during a prayer meeting. Peter was released from prison by angels during a prayer meeting. The distance between David's defeat or victory with Goliath was just a stone's throw away. Seriously, victory for the whole of Israel was in one stone. He put that stone in that sling and the outcome of that battle determined whether Israel was going to be victorious or be slaves. All of destiny can ride on something that can happen in an instant. Do you know how long it took that stone to go from that sling to the forehead of Goliath? Not more than three seconds. You are three seconds or less away from God healing your heart from God healing your body, from God filling your life with so much joy, it will be like a river bubbling out of your soul. You are so close. It's just the other side. Why is it that many times people stand in their pew and, and they think, I, I don't know. I'm never going up there. But yet, I've seen people step out of their pew and just, they moved about four feet. The power of God hits them. 
and miracles happened. I've seen it over and why? You know what they did? They moved from here to here. They said, maybe, maybe I'll try the other side of the boat. It's an act of faith. It's an act of obedience. You're saying, are you saying three seconds from now, God could deliver me from any addiction? Yes. I've seen it. How long did it take him to raise that man from 38 years of being lame? Just pick up your bed, let's go home. Three seconds. Anybody believe that you're close? That you are so close? Yeah, but I, I've had a relationship with Jesus. Thank you. I am so glad for anything that you have ever experienced from God. I really am. I'm delighted. I rejoice and celebrate with you. But for anyone in this building to say that there's not more. I took all of God and put him in a thimble. I'm all set. Is God not everywhere? Is God not continually omnipresent, you know, omnipotent? I mean, he's got way more than any of us have ever received. He's got more to give us. So to say that's enough. I'm inviting you today to say, Lord, how far away am I from an experience that is greater than anything I have ever had? You are literally within, you can reach out and touch it right now. I invite you today. Would you mind just walking up here as an act of obedience to him and an act of faith? and say, Lord, I'm just going to stretch a little bit. Whatever has happened on the left side, I'm going to take my net and put it on the right side. I'm just going to make a small adjustment in my worship. I'm going to make a small adjustment in my faith. And if you don't feel like you have enough faith, maybe you could ask the person that's standing next to you saying, I really need something powerful today would you mind praying with me add your faith to mine and help us help me lift this net from the left side to the right side so that I can receive what God wants me to receive there's one last boulder to remove to free my son to free my daughter I just need a little help it's a little too heavy for me we can combine our prayers together and say Lord let's pray together. The man that they lowered through the ceiling, he said when he saw their faith, he didn't say when I saw his faith, he said there, when they combined together and they lowered that man into the presence of Jesus, do you realize how close Jesus said, if you'll just remove the distance between you and your need, I'll take care of that miracle. That's it. Let's worship him. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you remove every obstacle to today. Close to you. Remove every obstacle, Jesus. Just to be close Give us that, just a little bit of a push, God. Just to, be close to, to try to put the net on the other side of the boat. I need something from you, Jesus. I haven't been living in sin. God, I've been faithful in all areas of my walk with you, but I still need something today.